She's a wife, a mother, a chef, and a social media guru. Let's meet her. Continental food, madam. International food captain. Who show you how to make pizza? Jala, mango and okra Sushi and pastries. All this and more. Sweet and So welcome to a segment of Building a Legacy That Counts, where we look to inspire and empower the youth. Uh, my name is Akusika, and today I have an inspiring lady with me, Na Ajile, famously known as Sweet Ajile to her fans. I am amazed that she took this interview with me. I'm just absolutely amazed and I'm thankful. So without wasting time, welcome Na. Thank you. How are you doing today? I am doing very well. How about yourself? I'm hanging in there. I am hanging in there. With COVID, there isn't much you can do but to take care of yourself. How are you doing with COVID? Well, we, after being locked up or locked down for a while, my husband started going out. So, you know, the usual, we have a, it's like a ritual when you come in the house, taking your shoes off, having a particular shoe to go out. Oh. I almost want to wear one thing to go out. And then <laughs> once I come in, put it in a plastic bag when I'm going out with mm-hmm. But we thank mm-hmm. God we're still yeah. here. And it's amazing. Know. God has been faithful during the season. Yeah. Um, yeah, things are okay and yes. we are alive. So exactly. that's amazing. That's amazing. Anyways, today I really do want to get to know Na. A lot of people know Sweet Ajili, but the goal of this interview is to really go in depth and try to understand who is Na. So tell me. Who is Na? Well, Na Ajili is a lonely young woman that grew up in La. It used to be known as Labadi, Pamwai Junction okay. to be exact. That's where I grew up. And I was raised by a single mother. Mm-hmm. And my mom left when I was eight years old to America. So I was then raised by my aunties who were amazing by the way. And my real name is Maklina Na Ajili Aban. Aban because that's my father is a twin. And in Ga, somebody that's after twins is Aban. And our family name is supposed to be Ajiti. So I would have been Maklina Na Ajili Ajiti but he uh-huh. named us after himself. So I'm um, Aban. A lot of people think I'm fancy, but I'm gone. It's Aban. Nice. But school made it Aban, Aban, Aban. And it got stuck that way. So yeah, I was raised by a single mother. Then my aunties raised me until I joined my mom when I was 17. So yeah, that's not nah, Okay, so now I'm Maklina Na Ajili Kwe because I'm married. Ah, okay, very nice. Very nice. Now let's dive right into it. Did you know you always wanted to be a chef? No. And listen, I call you a chef because for me, a chef is somebody who is able to draw in their audience. And when I watch your videos, I am fully immersed into what you're doing. And um, a chef teaches, right? right? You are very articulate. You walk people through, you know, the, the ingredients, the process of cooking. Um, did you always know you wanted to do this? No. No. So growing up, I was very skinny. I was one <laughs> tooth. I think we girl. all, I think, oh, wait. <laughs> and 
people made fun of me. Other people called me Miss Ghana. People thought I was so pretty. I could win Miss Ghana. So in my neighborhood, that was kind of my nickname. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be a air hostess. Now it's known as a flight attendant. I would have so, probably met you on a plane because I wanted to be <laughs> right. Yeah. I always wanted to be a in Ghana we say air hostess. I mm -hmm. thought they were so beautiful, they were so sharp in their dressing. So after JSS going into um SSS, mm -hmm. they said to be an air hostess, you have to take up home economics. Okay. So, that is the cause that I took up. I went to Tema Secondary School and I took up home economics over there, but I only went there for one year, one term. And I left right when I went into Form 2, I left Ghana. Ah, did you enjoy doing home economics? I did. It was, it was the most disrespectful course in the school. <laughs> but I didn't mind. I enjoyed it. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that because um, I wanted to be an air hostess just like you. But then some wow. ah, like you, I thought it was a sharp, you know, profession. The uniforms, it just looked really appealing to me. Um, but as time went on, I wanted to be a bilingual secretary. Oh, that's good. And so when I went to Holy Child, I decided to do business secretariat. Right. Oh. Um, and French, because, you know, that would be what I, I, I needed to get me to where I needed to be. And mm -hmm. to your point, it was one of those courses where people absolutely looked down on. You know? Oh, yeah. You were very close to the home economics individuals. <laughs> so you got to enjoy some of the food they made, I guess. Oh, we sure did. <laughs> because people they will be your friends. Us. As soon as the food is ready, you have friends. Exactly. <laughs> they need a taste test. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so from wanting to be an air hostess to now a social media influencer, and I call you a mogul because for you to have almost grown a following um, of 300,000 people, you must be doing something right. What got you into social media? All right. So when i left ghana and i came into america mm -hmm. i finished up high school here but i was bullied a bit because of the way i spoke they you know i looked different i was more respectful so i was bullied so i said if this is how america is i am not going to college because if i'm struggling here if i go to college it's gonna be worse Mm -hmm. So I decided that I wasn't going to go to college. But in high school, I did dental assisting. So I had the okay. certificate for dental assisting. But when I graduated, I heard of um, New York Restaurant School. So I decided to go there. And so I went and I took up culinary arts. And so even before that, I always liked to bake little things and make little things. So I have family members that will call me and, oh, Ajele, meaning I want to make this. How do I do it? Or I want to do this. How do I do that? And I'll usually walk them through it or teach it. them how to okay. do it. And then my beautiful um, sister, Boatima, she told me about YouTube. I think it was in 2015. Okay. She told me, yeah, she told me about YouTube. She said, Ajele, the way you are always teaching people how to make this, people always reaching out to you for recipes, mm -hmm. I think you should check out this app. I knew about Facebook, but I didn't know about YouTube. So then I went on there and I began seeing recipes. Because when you first go on there, you don't see anything. Because you, you see everything, but you don't see what you're there for. Exactly. So through exactly. searching and pop-ups, I started seeing um, Ghanaian chefs like Indudu by Fafa. And, you know, they were doing well. And mm -hmm. I said to myself, hmm, I can do this. Yeah. So, but I, I'm, I'm a very shy person. Um, Are you? 
I can say, yeah, I'm, I'm a sort of a loner. Growing up, people thought I was antisocial because mm. I don't, I didn't talk so a lot. A lot talk but, a lot. you know, I've been through a lot growing up. And even now, you still go through a lot. So withdrawing to yourself always seemed to be the best and the safest thing to do. Exactly. So when I started my channel, I actually started with my daughter. She, her, she made our first video. She and made the uh, plantain chips. Exactly. Mm -hmm. do you know? <laughs> I do. I do. I went all the way back because oh, I wanted to see you. where you had started from. Yes. So when she made that and I started, I decided to hide behind the camera because mm -hmm. it was my safe place. Nobody sees you. You just come and you show what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're gone. So that is when she told me that one day, I just, I was like, I could do this. And I had to convince my husband because he's a very, very private person. And he's like, you're going to show the world the food we're eating. And I said, no. Yeah. When I film, we will eat it before <laughs> I post the video. So it took him a while because my husband is extremely private. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it took a lot. So now sometimes he appears in the videos and everything. But that is the genesis. My cousin, sister, Guatima, telling me, Ajale, check out YouTube. I did, and I started posting my videos, not knowing where it will go. Yeah. And today, here we are. Here we are. And it's amazing how sometimes people see something in you that you don't necessarily see in yourself, no. or you see it, but you don't really know how to kept, uh, cultivate or put, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. thank you to your sister, because yes. if not for her, we, the sweet team, <laughs> We've been missing all this deliciousness. So thank you. Thank you. And I mean, you hit on something really important. How do you stay on social media and still keep your private life? How do you manage that? Because I think you've done a phenomenal job. I know Sweet Ajili, but I don't know so much about Na, which is important because you still need to keep, you know, that part of you private. Exactly. Well, um, once I really started and got into YouTube mm -hmm. and then I moved on to Facebook, I started posting my dishes on my regular Na Ajili page. Okay. And it took off. Facebook, I think, is it's been more successful to me than mm. YouTube. And when it took off, I went from having about 500 friends to 5,000 within a month. Oh, so wow. That happened. Yeah. When that happened, um, it was a little scary because I had some juju people also requesting you as friends and oh, wow. disguising themselves to be other people it could be a girl that requests your friendship once you accept it then it's a malam oh, and it, it, it was it was a bit scary, scary when that happened and so one of my beautiful youtube sisters that had a page on facebook already her name is mira so okay. i contacted her and i said how do you go about this or whatever she said oh you can just create a page so when you go under somebody's page, you see where it says create your own page. So I created the page. And once I started putting my recipes there, I mm -hmm. stopped putting it. I'll put it there and I'll share it. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped putting it on Najeli. But then I was hacked. Somebody hacked wow. into my Facebook and I was locked out. And I realized that. I just accepted a whole lot of people as friends that I didn't know. So okay. I wanted to delete them. Little did I know that you had to delete each person individually. It's not like, you know how you can accept all? Yeah. You cannot delete all. Got it. So okay. it took me days to delete everything. So even now, when people request my friendship on Na Ajele, I don't accept because there's nothing going on there. Mm -hmm. I used to post mm -hmm. pictures of my family my kids i no longer do that right i don't do that anymore and so i think that kind of helped me 
stay private because mm -hmm. if I'm having lunch with my husband at a restaurant, previously I may take a picture and put it there. Mm -hmm. But now I'm more mindful. Exactly. You know, so yeah, that I try to, and also my husband is my best friend. Mm -hmm. I don't oh, really that's have sweet. friends. Yeah. My husband doesn't, my, my husband have friends and I have friends, but I can go the whole day with nobody calling me except my mom or my brother. You know, my brother's like my dad. He walked me down the aisle. So oh. if my brother doesn't call me or my mother doesn't call me or my husband doesn't call me, I can literally go the whole day without my phone ringing. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I have people that would love my phone number to reach out and talk to me. And it's beautiful. Yeah. But, it. you know, I, I have to keep my private life separate. Absolutely. From, yeah. Absolutely. You need to have some kind of, a, you know, sanity. And that oh, is yeah. for <laughs> your family, your friends, because yes. they keep it peaceful for you. That's awesome. I mean, the fact that you've been able to separate the two definitely says a lot. And as people look to go into social media, um, I think it's important that they do realize and keep the two separate. Yes. Yeah. So talking about social media, um, what are some of the challenges that you faced and how oh, have you overcome them? It's, it's a whole lot. Yeah. You have total strangers insulting you. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, you may make friends on social media, but that's, I can't say it's the worst type of friendship to have, but having friends on social media, you have to be careful because you can know somebody for over a year mm -hmm. over social media. You could call them your sister all you want, but um, it could turn really quickly. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I've been through hell and back on YouTube to where I nearly quit. Really? Know, but when I take a break, I have people reach out like, oh, sweet Angela, we miss you. You have not posted in a while. And then you sit back and say, OK, am I going to quit for the haters mm -hmm. or the people that want you to fail? Or are you going to be there for the people that are genuinely for you? Thank because you. you may I have a lot of following. You do. But it's not every video that you post that you have a lot of views. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. and though and that can really discourage you. Low views can discourage you, but exactly. you have to think about the people that as soon as you post the video, they're there. Mm -hmm. Some people cannot do without you, whether we believe it or not. After a while on social media, people see you as their sister, exactly. as their mom, as yeah. their friend. Yeah. So sometimes if I don't post for a week, people start to reach, you know, reach out to say, hey, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and then there are people that at times I can post a video, my most recent video, I believe, no, not this one, the tapioca video. I posted 15 seconds. After I posted, I had zero views, zero comments, zero likes, one dislike. So, you know, you have 15 people. 15 seconds. So what have you seconds. seen that will get you to dislike? Yeah, picture? exactly. In a six minutes video, 15 seconds of me posting, I had a dislike with no views, nothing. So when those things happen if you're a new youtuber it hurts mm -hmm. you it does. the first as your yeah. first dislike is like painful mm -hmm. but i am to the point where i within a minute of every video i have a dislike and mm -hmm. as a human being you will say oh it's all good it is good because you have you everybody can like you if everybody mm -hmm. likes you there's a problem yeah. But at the same time, you want the person to at least watch the video for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And also you have, I have people will say, oh, you use too much salt. Or, oh, you, why did you put baking soda in your okra? Or, you know, but people forget that I like what I like. Exactly. And you like what you like. Mm -hmm. Now, although I'm teaching, 
I'm teaching you so that you can take the best out of it. Exactly. You don't have to take my words exactly. and make it yours. That, that doesn't make you smart. Mm -hmm. But if somebody criticizes me and I, I, when I read comments and I know that this person is genuinely trying to help me, exactly. I take mm -hmm. that. Like recently a lady said, you cooked all the nutrients out of the tomatoes. I'm Nigerian mm -hmm. and we cook proper um, tomato stew. Oh. You know, when I read that comment, it hurt a little because we're Africans and mm -hmm. our food mm -hmm. is similar. Mm -hmm. And in order to have a tasty tomato stew, you have to fry it well. Agreed, agreed. I don't care what anybody says. Mm -hmm. You have to fry it well. Now, you will add other things that will bring the nutrients, the nutrients into back. the right. food, but people just like to put you down and make you miserable. I've cried over comments. Mm. You know? I've cried over fellow YouTubers being mean to you. And I used to say, but about a year ago, <laughs> about a little over, well, now it's, yeah, a little over a year ago, I went through a lot to where people that I thought genuinely cared for me mm. or loved me, I, I guess I did something wrong that I didn't know that I had done. Mm. And people are not willing to forgive you mm -hmm. the way your family will forgive you and exactly. be there for you. And exactly. that's what people don't understand. Family, no matter what you do, you have no choice then to forgive. Exactly. But when it's a, a social media friend, they're quick to just toss you like yesterday's mm -hmm. garbage. Mm -hmm. So I had this saying that I love so much. The love of family is life's greatest blessing. So when that happened, girl, after I cried and did everything, and I was so scared to tell my husband because my husband does not want me to be friends with nobody, especially on social media. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't care how nice they are to you. I don't care how nice their comments are. You know, you know. So yeah. when it ha everything was just going downhill and it went downhill fast, fast. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell him. So I would cry. And then when he comes uh -huh. home, I fix myself. But then he kn your husband knows you. They know <laughs> when you've been crying, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? So my advice to mo you know, the people that are coming, although I'm not supposed to be advising right now, that's not the <laughs> question, is listen to your husband, period. Mm. That's it. Mm. Has not known best. Social Has media known. can tumble and roll you. And that's a reason why most of our husbands are older than us. Exactly. They can see what we cannot they see. They are wise. So. They see what you cannot see. And more importantly, they are the third people looking in. So something that you may not be able to capture. Exactly. They will tell you. And sometimes it hurts. Sometimes yeah. we are quick to be defensive. But to mm -hmm. your point, if you can take a step back and really process what they're saying, because husband knows best. Your husband wants the best. Sometimes they do it in a jealous way, but at the <laughs> end of the day, they want your best interest at heart. So, you know, it takes, I've been married for a long time, mm -hmm. but it took me going through certain things recently to know because i'm always saying my husband doesn't want me to have friends he want me all to himself oh. <laughs> but you know when this happened at the end of the day where did the hug come from exactly. him. Mm -hmm. where did the kiss mm -hmm. come from him. him yeah where will that well that was all after i told you so <laughs> You know that has to make its way into the conversation. Yeah, that was the question. I told you. you know, I, I don't want to say it, but I have to say it. I told you so. But at the end of the day, he was wonderful. And that's when that saying that I've had in my kitchen all these years meant something to you. Meant something that, wow, friends can toss you, mm -hmm. but family is life's greatest blessing. will always be there. Mm -hmm. yeah.
That is amazing. That is amazing. People do not see the struggle that goes on behind the scenes. I mean, for them, they are waiting for a recipe every week. And if it doesn't drop, you are in trouble. You know, but they don't see the family that you it's have a lot. to take care of, the husband that you have to take care of. And mm-hmm. sometimes we even forget to take care of ourselves. Ourselves. Right? Yeah. In the midst of all of it. So, the yeah, I mean, that is, that is I, amazing because had you yes. not said it, I mean, everything looks great to me on the screen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that the reminds me, day, the other day I was editing and I heard my husband talking to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what that means, right? Yes, I do. And said, you know, you know, recording if you you don't you know make sure you're okay, Nike. I'm okay, can be now my And so when yeah. I was editing and I heard that little conversation going on, of course you edit it out. But and I'm like, wow, I thought, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's a lot. It is yeah. a whole lot. It's a lot. lot. It's a lot. Um, And I know exactly how you feel. Um, I recently started my YouTube page as well called the African Legacy TV. Thank you. And you so happen to be the first interviewer that I have with this segment. So, I mean, I really appreciate that. But to your point, it's a lot of work. It is. I mean, editing can take hours Mm. and to your point when somebody within 15 minutes can dislike a video yeah oh 15 (laughs) seconds can dislike a video that you Mm -hmm. have taken five hours out of your day yeah put together i I can Mm -hmm. see where that can hurt yeah um like sweet as jilly saying everybody if you're looking to go into social media you really have to kind of grow a thick skin Yes. It's going to come with some tears and some pain, mm-hmm. but you have to grow some thick skin. So that's mm-hmm. one thing to note if you're looking to venture into uh, this world. Yeah. yeah. Just know that the person leaving you that bad comment, they don't know you. Mm-hmm. Once you have that in the back of your mind that, you know, this person doesn't really know me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people attack me because of the way I speak. Some people say you have a fake American accent. The truth of the matter is I do not even have an American accent Mm -hmm. because in America alone, there are so many different accents. Every state has their own accent. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it reminds me of high school. The same thing I was bullied for in high school has followed me to, because I don't speak like a Ghanaian, fine, Mm -hmm. but I also don't speak like an American. I I'm like caught that. somewhere yeah. in the middle mm-hmm. and it's fine by me. Yeah. You know, at times I'll say things and my kids will correct me or they'll say, what, 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 what did you say? <laughs> and then they'll say, Oh, oh. You know? <laughs> I know that feeling. My four year old does it to me all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't understand us. Like my first experience with being corrected in America, my best friend, I said hippopotamus. Ah! And then my friend said, what? I said, what do you mean? I said, look, that's a huge hippopotamus right there. And she looked. At that time, she wasn't looking at the TV. She finally looked. She said, oh, hippopotamus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, now I say hippopotamus because if I want the person I'm speaking to to understand to what understand, I'm saying, right. I have to, you know, exactly. I, I'm not one of those people, you go to Rome, you do what Romans do, mm-hmm. but I have an accent. It's not a Ghanaian accent, but then it's not an American accent. And exactly. people attacking you for the way you speak, I think is low. It's very, very low. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that is absolutely one of the things that you can simply ignore. Because you know they are out to just, you know, upset you. Yeah. uh, Because of what they see you doing. Exactly. Uh, My next question for you has to do with the video that you posted when you gained 100,000 subscribers. Listen, I listened to that song, Count Your Blessings, Name Them One. One by One. Yes. I I, I have. Blessings. 
see what God has done. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Take me to church. <laughs> when I watched the video now, I saw, I, I could see somebody who was processing what they had gone through mm-hmm. without you speaking it. Right. Like, it was, it was, um, it was almost like you were thankful and grateful. Mm-hmm. Can you share with me what that journey from a hundred subscribers to a hundred thousand subscribers was for you? Okay. So I was on YouTube for a year. Okay. Before I got my 400 subscribers. Yes. Okay. So when I see people come on YouTube and within a month, they have a hundred. Some people within two months, they have a thousand and they complain. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised Mm -hmm. because when I started YouTube, although people were there, it wasn't as cluttered with Mm -hmm. Ghanaian stuff as it is now, especially cooking. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that many people. And I don't think uh, Ghanaians had heard about YouTube enough. So I was on YouTube. It took me over... My first, I, I had 20 subscribers very quickly. Of course, your family, your friends. Your friends. You know. <laughs> and then that I have... Auntie, to, that auntie who never goes on YouTube, subscribe as well. Subscribe. And they subscribe, but they don't even watch, you know? Exactly. So I was on YouTube for a year, and I did not have uh, um, 400 subscribers. I was When I hit one year, I think I, I had about... Um, 350 subscribers and then that was when I posted I made jollof rice and then I posted it on Facebook Mm -hmm. and it kind of went viral a little bit and that shocked me to where I was now so it's hard to post a video and two months later you still don't have a hundred views it's very very discouraging Mm -hmm. highly discouraging but then there's this one person that you don't know count your family out Mm -hmm. that are coming to comment there's this one person that will come on your channel that makes you want to post for them Mm -hmm. in my own case there was this um lady called Araba Pakao. Okay. I've never met the lady. I don't know what she looks like. This lady just came on my channel. I I can't quite remember under what video I first saw her. Mm -hmm. And she saw something in me that at that time I had not seen. And she she would leave comments saying, subscribe to this channel. It's going to be a great channel. She's the best cook. Subscribe... At the time, she come and say, subscribe to this channel and your marriage will never be the same. Oh, you wow. know, she, I don't know this woman, mm-hmm. but I can never forget her. I can never forget her name. At times, I yearn for her. And you know what? She's like an angel because once I begin to grow. She went away, huh? She went away. Mm-hmm. But once in a while, she'll come and come in, and then she's gone. Wow. And one time I'm like, I want to speak to you, but she never reached out right. because she did so much. I have my family that's encouraging me, but of course your family is always proud of you. No matter what you do, they think you've done it best, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but there's this lady that will say, you're the best cook on YouTube. You're the, this, you're the, that, you're the, and I'm like, who? And she does not have a photo on her <laughs> she is uh, an angel to... yeah and she was my recent video she said the class prefect has landed or something to that sort. <laughs> and that's what she is she yeah. is my class prefect because yeah. she's my biggest cheerleader other than my family she's mm-hmm. you know so when you are at 10 subscribers pay attention Pay attention to the people that are leaving you comments Mm. because some of them are straight from their hearts and they push you more than you can even imagine. So even without getting 20 views in over a month, I post for her. 
Mm. There's another Juanita Abochi, whom I later found out that was my brother's friend. Ah. So, um, yeah, Dr. Doctor, if you watch this, I'm saying hi. I just went <laughs> to my brother and I said, this, this lady, Juanita, she's been giving me the best comments. And then my brother started laughing because he recommended the channel to her. So those <laughs> types of people mm -hmm. are the ones that encourage you. So you may start with having bad comments. You may start with having less views. Don't worry about it. Just do what you have to do. Just water the plant. Exactly. Water it. And in due time, God is going to step in and see what you're doing and reward you. So it's yeah. tough, if you do but it's it, going to happen. Yeah. And if you do it effort, effortlessly and you put in the work, yes, I think that eventually it will pay off. It will. That's awesome. Will. That is awesome. I mean, that goes to show that, you know, you really have to put in the work. YouTube, to your point, is saturated. There are so many people out there yeah. doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. And so you really have to find a way to stand out. And I think your yes. authenticity is what people go for. Because when I watch you, I, I remember watching you with my brother, and he was like, wow, she's pretty good. And my brother is pretty hard on giving <laughs> giving good compliments and so yeah. wow he he saw something that i see whenever i watch it. so um to everybody watching being your authentic self yes is gonna get you far yes, yes watch other videos to push you to fuel you to learn however when you go back to doing what you want to do be yourself be yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. be yourself because like when people say I'm speaking with a fake accent, I think if you keep on watching me, you will know that I'm speaking the same way. So that should tell you that, okay, I was wrong or whatever, because always be yourself. If you mm -hmm. try to be somebody else, you're going to quit because exactly. your real self will start to emerge and exactly. the people watching you may not like it. Exactly. Exactly. So how did you come up with the name Sweet Team? And sweet team. what does the Sweet Team mean to you? Okay, so my, of course my channel name is Sweet Ajili. Mm -hmm. And I came about Sweet Ajili. My cousin introduced me to Instagram. And she was okay. trying to set up Instagram. We put Na Ajili, it was taken. We put pretty Ajele, it was taken. We put sexy Ajele, it was taken. <laughs> and my cousin said, how about sweet Ajele? Ah. I said, oh, yeah. So we tried it, and it went through. And I'm the queen of sweets. You know, I'm always baking cakes, making sweet things. So when sweet Ajele went through on Instagram, I was like, oh, that's, you know, that's pretty cool. And so when I set up my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. I set it up with Sweet Ajele because I wanted to, I wanted my channel to be more about sweet things like cakes, ah, okay. candy. So once I set it up that way, on YouTube, I hear people saying, guys, 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 guys. And I said, to, one time somebody actually left a comment, why are you calling everybody guys? So mm -hmm. I said, okay, guys is like a general term for everybody. Right. So no, everybody's not a guy. And then, you know, so I just let that go. So I, I changed it to everyone or mm -hmm. everybody. So I'll say, hello, everyone, like that. And I, I felt like the person, that's what I'm talking about. It's not everybody that criticizes you that is doing something wrong. They may exactly. be harsh on yeah. you, yeah. but if you sit back and reread into the comments, mm -hmm. you will know that, oh, they, you know. And so I watch other American channels and I saw that some of them had a different name for their subscribers. And mm -hmm. I didn't, I felt like the people that were supporting me then, although not much, they loved me enough to be family. Exactly. So I can't call them subscribers. Subscribers, 
at times you have to pay for a subscription. So mm-hmm. it's like work. Yeah. And I wanted them to feel at home. So I sat there and I was thinking, you know, what am I going to call them? So one day I was, as I was doing a voiceover, I just said sweets. I called them mm-hmm. my, my sweets with an S in the end because I can't call them Ajilis because that's my name, mm-hmm. you know, and they all have their individual names. But your Aku, your sweet. Exactly. We all have our sweet side. So if the people on my channel, even the worst amongst them have their sweet, soft side. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, there's somebody, they call their uh, people gang and this and that. So I was like, no. When I'm talking, I tell my people that, you know, we are family here. Mm-hmm. I, if you, I don't know if you've heard me, but I always say this is not my channel. It's exactly. our, our channel. channel. So if it is our channel, then we are a team. Mm-hmm. So one day as I was doing a voiceover and I just said, hello, sweet team. And I, I was like, so in my next recording, I had to go and listen to what I said. <laughs> so little by little, yeah, the team yeah. stayed. And for the most part, my, my, my team is sweet. That's for a- the most part. They so that's how well. it came about. I didn't want to call everybody guys. And I mm-hmm. advised because and when i i would finish my video and i'll say bye guys i changed it to you all mm. you know so it, it became that people see me as different and i i guess sometimes people may hate on that because i don't go with the flow mm-hmm. i do my own thing mm-hmm. like i don't watch other people and try to copy what they've done exactly i do my own thing you know so you somebody may think i'm trying to you know downplay their work or make them feel half of the time because of what i went through there's so many channels i no longer watch Mm -hmm. so you but the the sad thing is you still get feedback from people calling you and saying oh somebody's throwing shade at you here or somebody's doing this or that i don't hear Mm -hmm. i don't i'm Mm -hmm. too old for that exactly and i think you've gotten way too matured and grown Mm -hmm. in this business to know to just tune out yeah so before we wrap it up what would you tell that young Ghanaian girl or you know Ghanaian boy who is looking to go to school to do home economics because to your point home economics is not respected i don't know about now but in my day back in holy child it was one of those courses where you know if you don't really get the sciences or the accounting you know you get defaulted to that right Mm -hmm. and it wasn't it didn't have a lot of respect associated with it so what you're saying is some people actually get into home economics because they didn't do well in, in the, um, I yeah. think I did pretty good. But <laughs> anyway, I chose. Some, some, <laughs> choose, some choose to do it. Yes. And, and some get defaulted to doing it because Maybe they, they didn't defaulted really. Because they didn't have a cause for air hostess. Uh-huh. And I was told that to become an air hostess, Mm -hmm. That's what I needed to do. And home economics involves a lot of science, a a lot more science than people. If you're going to go into home economics, thinking because you're not smart, you Mm -hmm. will regret it Mm -hmm. because it's actually science. Yeah, yeah. What would you tell that young person? Um, I would tell them to go for it. Do not listen to, you know, I was made fun of. We, Mm -hmm. we, the home economics, we were not respected at all. And even in the school, our classrooms were pushed in the corner somewhere. In Tamasco, they had home economics block. When you come in the school, it is somewhere in the corner. Mm. You know, but now on YouTube, we have people that are cooking on YouTube that are not cooks. Yeah, yeah. You know, that is what is paying a lot of people today yeah although they are not cooks exactly those exactly there are cooks there 
but there are some people there are some people that choose to do it because they love mm -hmm. to cook. Exactly. So if you want to go into home economics, do not listen to what anybody's going to say. Go with your heart. Say you think you're too dumb to take up science. So what? If you take home economics, mm -hmm. you're the one that they're going to, the, the scientists are going to come to for their wedding food exactly you're the one you know what i mean that the big um would you accountants mm -hmm. are going to come to for their baby shower food mm -hmm. you know so home economics is a hard course it is not easy it is not for lazy people if you are <laughs> lazy do something else because things if you're like let's say your news anchor mm -hmm. it's hard because you have to read a lot exactly but being a cook not only do you have to read you have to put it out mm -hmm. and you have to put it out well yeah you don't want to kill people when they exactly. eat exactly so i think it's key your point is, is, key. is key that you know what you're doing <laughs> you know what you're doing and you have mm -hmm. to love what you're doing you have to want to do what you don't do it because everybody else is doing it so you want to do it no exactly. you will fail at it and oh if you don't eat a lot of things you cannot go into home economics because mm -hmm. the rule of thumb in in catering school is you have to taste everything so even if you don't eat pork you have to taste it before you serve it to the customer you can't just cook something you don't know how it tastes and you're serving it exactly so you have to be open to eating any type of food you have to read a lot believe it or not because you know in uh, restaurant school i took um food and nutrition you have to do <laughs> nutrition and you can become a nutritionist just from taking home economics so wow. it's not just science that will make you mm -hmm. a nutritionist you can take up home economics in order to know what to feed somebody for their set ailment or whatever you know so amazing yeah don't don't just don't let anybody <clears throat> excuse me don't let anybody downplay your dream if somebody like me i grew up in an uncompleted building with no electricity okay so people see me i can say that from day one i was blessed i will go mm -hmm. to school and people will see me and think i'm some type of dada b meanwhile my dad was not in my life he doesn't know how i went to first grade until yeah. my, he doesn't know none of that my mom and my aunties did everything and we live from one uncompleted building to another. But whenever I would step out, people thought I'm this Dada B. And I'm not. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's the favor at, of God. Oh yeah. I look at other people and I'm like, you're blessed. I never got the luxury of living in a home with my mom and my dad. When that happened, I was so young, I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. So that young kid in ghana that is on the street selling because i've sold ice water i've sold things and you think that is it that is not it god he have a plan it. for everybody he does he have yeah. a plan for everybody because you know i literally lived in a house with boards on the windows where we, we we take showers and you lift your bucket up and there's a snake underneath your bucket and i i wasn't living in a village yeah. i'm living in a crop so when people look at me and they think oh no it's I, not I've been been easy yeah you know? yeah so. well what is next for sweet agility is right it now, million subscribers um I would thank God for that. We always want to grow. We don't want to go down. We want to exactly. grow. But my biggest prayer right now, which is what is next for me, people think I'm rich or something, but I'm praying for my helper. That's what I'm praying for because I have so much I want to do. Yeah. But without help, I'm not, I'm not 
like rich to be able to do this do that you have so much you want to do but the finances don't help you exactly to achieve certain things and it seemed like you're stuck in one place so my only prayer right now is a helper and i know god is going to send my helper very soon <laughs> it's funny you said that because as you talked about that lady who would always come and comment mm -hmm. what i wanted to say is um if you're looking to go into this pray for a helper right uh, exactly pray for to send you that one a helper mm -hmm. who would just push you through it because yeah um sometimes that's all you need yeah you Anything. can never be too successful you yeah. can never say oh i've made it i need a helper that's how i look at this i need a helper and i know god is going to send that helper my way to say oh this young lady is doing a good job and i want to invest in her or i you know that's what i pray for i don't have it all so i i don't front mm -hmm. i'm one person that i will not front i don't have i don't have exactly. I, I'm, I'm, mm -mm. so anyway i am God looking is. to the day where I see you on a show like Master Chef, because I think you are going to put Ghana on the map. Oh. And now I have a feeling you are going to do amazing things. Amen. What I do want to tell you is continue to build a legacy that counts, because you will look back someday and you'll be amazed at all the hard work you put in. Thank you so much. And I'm so proud of you. You're doing an amazing oh, job. Thank you. And I really appreciate, I think you're, you're the first person I showed your something on my channel uh -huh. and the t-shirt. Uh -huh. It's really uh -huh. beautiful. And thank yeah. you for sending me that t-shirt. No, I really appreciate it. Thank you. You are doing thank an amazing you. job and continue god bless whatever you're trying to do god bless your new channel may he it's bless going you to as take well. off thank you for staying humble when i sent you the shirt and you featured it in your video i was absolutely amazed but that's what humility looks like and so mm -hmm. thank you i just have a feeling you're going to do amazing thank you thank you <laughs>